Hey everyone, I'm Ace of Clay and welcome to my 2022 year in review where I go through all the sculptures I made this past year. Be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video where I will be showcasing some of your sculptures that you made throughout the year as well, along with a special message from me. And now without further ado, we're just gonna jump right in because I know no one has an attention span anymore. So let's get started. We're gonna start with my first sculpture of 2022, which is Silly Willy, my own Poppy Playtime character that's actually part of my mutant universe. Now, Silly Willy was an idea that I came up with after doing my Poppy Playtime sculptures last year. I wanna make my own creepy killer monster toy. So that's kind of where he was born. And then I also incorporated him into my mutant universe. He is the first inanimate object that has become a mutant. Overall, I think he's pretty unique. I like the aesthetic of him. I like that he's supposed to be this like plush bunny rabbit character. One of those floppy plushes you see at like gas stations and like gift shops. And while he's not my most popular Mutant Universe character ever, I do think he makes a cool contribution. So that's Silly Willy. Next up, we have the Silent Hill Nurse. She was a lot of fun to make just because I don't do too many like anatomically correct human figurines. Everything that I do is pretty stylized. So this is a pretty standard like mannequin female form, which is nice and gory. I think she looks just like the nurses from the movie. I think she's pretty cool. I've always wanted to make like a bunch of them with like the different face variants and whatnot. But um, for now, we'll stick with this one. Next up, we have Pyramid Head. This guy was great to make. I learned a lot about sculpting male anatomy with him. I don't do too many like shirtless guy sculptures. So, you know, doing something different is always fun. He's absolutely shredded. Might be a little too shredded for the character, but overall, I think he's cool. And he was a really fun project. And the end to my Silent Hill series that I thought was gonna go on for a lot longer, but it didn't. But if you want me to bring it back, let me know in the comments. Next up, we have Sun and Moon from is this Five Nights at Freddy's? Yeah. Next up, we've got Sun and Moon from Five Nights at Freddy's. These are actually two separate videos, but it is the alter personas of this character. Sometimes he's a sun, sometimes he's a moon when the lights are off. Overall, both of these sculptures were very labor intense just because there's so many smooth details on them and just details in general, trying to get the proportions correct, making it look exactly like the character. That's always something that you've got to take into account. I remember painting the stars on this guy's pants was an absolute nightmare. I have no patience at all and I had to go around and paint every star individually making sure not to get blue paint on any of the other stars that I've already finished and it was just it was a long process but overall I think they're good sculptures they're pretty big too next up we have the huntress from Dead by Daylight she was a highly requested character very different from anything that I've done before I know I keep saying that but it's like every video last year I feel like I wanted to do something completely different than the video before sometimes I'd get sucked into like a mini series but Pretty much, I was all over the place last year, and this is just like proof of it. This is the only Dead by Daylight character I've made so far. If you'd like to see more, let me know. I think she's a pretty interesting character. She's got a ton of details on her. I always love sculpting characters with props because I just think it adds another dimension and level of interest to the piece, and her axe here definitely adds something to her and makes her more interesting, so. That's the Huntress. Next up, we've got Mommy Long Legs from Poppy Playtime. This was a fun little sculpture. Her legs are completely poseable. She, they're made with cosplay and wire so I can move them wherever I want. The reference, I actually made her before the game came out and I only had the trailer to go off in terms of what she looked like. And one of the reference photos that I found on Google showed her with like a foot for a hand and then a, you know a normal hand. And so I just kind of went off that photo. She doesn't have a foot for a hand. Even without being able to see her entire body, I think I did her justice. And she got a lot of views, so that was cool. She's finished off in resin. I know I didn't do resin on her legs because it would crack. I did the triple thick glossy varnish, which is holding up pretty well. She's a cool little sculpture and she looks nothing like the stuff that I'm used to making. <laughs> Next up, we have No Face from Spirited Away. This guy is such a cool little character. He makes a great sculpture. I love how he can like morph into different things and he's just so unique, like something you've never seen before. I loved sculpting the little realistic mouth. He's got his mask. I know I'm missing the two extra purple triangles above his eyes. I still haven't added those yet, but maybe I will. Overall, she, he was a pretty quick sculpture. I remember during this time, I was a little burnt out. And so when I get burnt out, I tend to sculpt things that are easy for me to finish and that's why I made him. But I don't think I slacked in any of the detail. I think, you know, it's there. He's just a simple looking character in the form that I made him in. So 
That's no face. <laughs> Next up, we've got my best friend, <laughs> the giant three foot ice cream man. I made him out of epoxy sculpt. He was quite a process, I'm not gonna lie, and he's really heavy. This was my first, I guess, very large sculpture that I've ever made, and I think he turned out really cool. I loved painting him. I loved having so much surface area to paint on him. Like, that's not something I'm used to, and it really lets you get in there and really add some details. He's got real human hair. It's got a nice, like, red tone to it when it hits the light, very nice. All of his clothes are real. I glued them all together myself, didn't sell them. And he's a cool little guy, you know? I need to update the joints on him one of these days because I know the wire that I'm using currently is not gonna hold up forever, especially if I keep moving them. So just gotta be gentle with them for now. Next up, we've got the first guide character of the year. This is the wolf guide. I didn't do too much Mutant Universe stuff last year just because I didn't want to just keep like, you know, beating a dead horse. I did so much Mutant Universe stuff in 2021 that I really kind of pulled back from it this year, but that's okay. I'm still gonna do more. I still have some more ideas for where it can go and still keep things interesting and all that. But this is the wolf guide. He's got a pretty interesting story. Of course, we've got some cosplay for his accent pieces, like his rope and all that. And I think he's really cool. I remember when I finished his mask, I was really happy with how it turned out because I wanted it to look like a wolf, not a dog. And that was kind of tricky, but I think I did it. Next up, we've got Coraline. I'm a little late to the game with the Coraline sculptures, but this is definitely a favorite movie of mine. I think the animation and everything in it is incredible and I finally got around to making the lead character. I've gotten so many requests to make Coraline characters, even outside of just Coraline, like I wanna make like Mr. Bobinski and like the mermaids, and maybe I'll get around to it this year, but this is Coraline, pretty straightforward. I think this arm is too long, but overall, I think she's a cool little character. I kinda wish I would've done her as a mixed media piece where I would've made her hair out of like yarn and you know, her little raincoat out of some, you know, latex or something, but I think she's cute. I like her. Next up, we have my realistic Enderman from Minecraft. This was my first Minecraft sculpture and the start of a very small series. Can't really see him because of my black shirt, but I think he is a cool character. These are always fun to do because the graphics in Minecraft are just so basic and simple and just block based where you really have a lot of artistic freedom where if you're going to translate something so simple into something more realistic, and that's why this guy was so much fun because I had a lot of say so in what he could look like and I think he still holds true to the Enderman aesthetic. Next up we've got Freddy Fazbear from Five Nights at Freddy's. This is my first robot sculpture and I think he turned out kind of cool. He's a little wonky but he gets the point across. You know who he is, right? <laughs> He's made out of living doll. He's got his little microphone again with the props and stuff. It always makes the sculpture more interesting. So, I mean, if you have the opportunity to add a prop to your character, definitely do it because it adds so much. Like, you know, just by looking at this, that he's a singer because he's holding a microphone and the way that he's holding it and all that, it tells his story. And without it, he just looked like some weird animatronic bear. Next up, we have my realistic creeper, continuing my very short Minecraft series. This is just what I think a creeper would look like if it wasn't a bunch of blocks. He was cool, fun to make, very blobby and gross looking. This is not definitely not my most popular series that I've ever done, but you know, I enjoyed making them. And that's all that matters, right? Next up, we have the last character in my Minecraft series, the realistic Ghast. I don't have him in front of me because I actually do not know where I put him. So yeah, but again, just like the other Minecraft characters that I did, he was a lot of fun to work on because there was so much room for creativity and design development. I kind of just went off like the description of the character, took inspiration, of course, from what they actually look like in the game and the just, just kind of designed the character around all that. This Minecraft series was kind of during a period where I didn't know what I was doing. Again, back to me making something completely different and unrelated every week. I was just kind of in this exploratory phase because I wasn't really sure like what to do, honestly. And I was just kind of making everything that I could think of in the hopes that something would catch on. And that's not always the best way to work. You kind of just have to make things that are a combination of things you enjoy making and what people will want to watch. And it's just like, there's a very fine line there. I got to keep my audience happy, all of you, of course, and I've got to keep myself happy because if I'm not happy, then everything just goes to <laughs> Next up, we have my Art the Cow. Oh, Art the Cow. Next up, we have my Art the Clown sculpture. I made this after I actually met the actor at Astronomicon. And had I planned properly, I would have given this to him at the con. Maybe he'll be there next year and I can give it to him. But 
Art the Clown, probably the most disturbing, gory, messed up horror movie I've ever seen. The first one, Terrifier. And then the second one, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or not, but I liked the first one better. I thought the second one, the second one was still good, but the first one, I think, um, is hard to top. But cool, cool. Love Damien Leone and David Howard Thornton, the guy who plays him. Next up, by popular demand, I created PJ Pugapillar from Poppy Playtime. This is my third Poppy Playtime character, and these always do well because the games are so extremely popular. And it's nice to make fan art and stuff that you don't have to come up with yourself because you can just look at a picture and make it. You don't have to think of anything. So this was a fun little sculpture. Um, if I were to do it again, I would probably make him a little longer. Maybe I could make a version of him that actually had like fur on it or something. That would be cool. Next, we've got Pennywise in his sort of lobster, mid lobster transformation stage. <laughs> very late to the game making Pennywise. I should have made him a very long time ago, right when the movies came out. But you know, I guess better late than never. He was a fun sculpture. Again, I love doing fan art because I don't have to think about anything and I can just sculpt and enjoy the process without any pressure. And I think he came out cool. I didn't do anything, you know, crazy with him. He's just, you know, he's just Pennywise with his lobster claws. Next up, I've got my Vecna diorama. This is the beginning of some diorama sculptures that I've worked on last year. Um, I actually had more fun sculpting the environment than I did sculpting Vecna himself. <laughs> Again, I made this before I watched the show, or did I make it before the show was even out yet? I don't know, but I was going off of like the teaser trailer and the pictures I could find on Google and it was really hard to see what he looked like. Like I know there's a couple mistakes, but overall, I mean, you look at this, you know it's Vecna, right? If you've seen Stranger Things and he's cool and his base is made out of epoxy sculpt. So it's like super durable. Don't ever have to worry about that breaking or anything. Anyway, there's Vecna. <laughs> Next we have the Crooked Man from The Conjuring. This was a great sculpture. He is totally right up my alley. Like I totally could have designed him myself. That's how much I love this thing and how much I connected with him. Um, you guys seem to do that too because he did, his video performed pretty well. Again, the prop thing, like I said, the umbrella just sells this thing. You know, it just makes it so much more interesting. He's in a more like dynamic pose. He got some cosplay for this little flappy part down here. And he was a fun little sculpture. And his glasses, look at his glasses. Those are just wire. I love it. Next up we have the sculptor, which is the only mutant I made last year. And he's definitely one of my favorites. I love his story. I love how creepy it is, how he, you know, uses his hands to, you know, sculpt his victims' bodies, putting them back together incorrectly and all that. Um, the whole story is in his video, of course, but he's cool. I love the addition of these little tiny pieces of wire, adding the hair on his fingers, and I love his long little nose. A lot of people commented saying that they remi that he reminds you of the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and I have to agree, maybe I was like subconsciously inspired by him, but he's definitely creepy. Yeah, that's the sculptor. Next up, we have the pale lady from Creepy Stories to Tell in the Dark. Definitely a childhood favorite book of mine, and they turned it into a movie, and I got to see the illustrations in three dimensions, and it made sculpting her a lot easier. <laughs> I think she came out pretty cool. I like the addition of the, you know, real hair, with the Mod Podge, like it still looks wet and gross all these months later. It'll stay like that forever. I do think if I were to make her again, I wouldn't make her head so separate from her body because with the actual character, the head is just kind of like an extension of her shoulders, just like, like a lump kind of, that's the best way I can describe it. And this is more of just like an egg sitting on her shoulders. So if I did it again, I would change that. But overall, I like how she turned out. We used some translucent cosplay for the bottom of her dress. The translucent thing really doesn't matter because I ended up painting it. I thought I was gonna do something different with it, but overall, she's cool. I really enjoyed sculpting her face because it's so intricate and like smooth and you can just really get in there and just like gently add all those features. I just remember I really enjoyed making her super, super freaky character. And now we are back in the mutant universe with the first Wanderer character. This is a new series of characters that I introduced. There are three Wanderers. This is the first one, Depremere. She is the personification of depression. So not only does she belong in the universe that I've created of characters, she is also like relatable to a lot of people. Like this is what 
depression feels like for me personally. Like I, I struggle with depression, I've been there, and this is just kind of what it feels like. The weight of the world on your shoulders. I think she's a pretty deep piece, probably one of the deepest ones that I've ever made. And I think she just, she speaks volumes. I took her to Monster Palooza with me and people really liked her there too, so. That's Depremere. Next up we have Angor, which is another wanderer from the mutant universe. He is the personification of anxiety. He was a lot of fun. I have definitely struggled with anxiety throughout like my entire life for the most part. Like ever since I like turned 13, I feel like that's when it first started. And I think he just embodies everything for me at least, about being anxious and just anxiety in general. The clock symbolizing, you know, the passage of time and like time running out and like stressing you out. His, he never closes his eyes because he can't sleep. He can't even like think straight. And he's just this poor little miserable guy. I think I definitely achieved what anxiety would look like if it were an actual creature or person. <laughs> Next up, the last Wanderer character from the Mutant Universe is my personal favorite, my personification of ADHD. His name is Mangle. I love his story. I love what everything on him symbolizes. And I really like personally connect to him because I am the poster boy for ADHD. I was diagnosed with it when I was younger and I still struggle with it to this day. And it's just, it's just one of those things, you know? It's a cross I have to bear. Mangle illustrates it perfectly. And I know a lot of people connected with him as well. He did he did pretty well. A lot of you um, really enjoyed this series and I know I only released three Wanderers from it, but honestly, I'm not comfortable sculpting personifications of disorders and mental illnesses that I don't personally experience. That's why I haven't done like OCD or DID or anything like that. So that's kind of my reasoning there. And I think three is a good number for them, I think. I think we're good there. Next up, we have an extremely simple sculpture. This is the first anti-mutant character, another series of characters that I introduced in the mutant universe. This is the only thing that can take down the seamstress. So I think this is a pretty cool concept. I'm still trying to think of ways to expand on it and like what the other mutants, anti-mutant counterparts would be. Like what would the ice cream man's anti-mutant be? What would, you know, the nannies be, the mother? I love his concept that he's just like this put together being made of found objects and he's just like this mannequin stand with little scissor hands and stuff. I think it adds another dimension to the mutant universe. Of course, I know I keep saying that, but overall, I think he's interesting. I think this whole sculpture took me like all of 30 minutes to make too, <laughs> but it's effective. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how long it takes you to make something, as long as it's effective and gets your point across, it's all that matters. Next up, we have the Necromancer. So last year I was really into telling more stories of the mutant universe. Like what would, you know, what happens when you die? Well, you meet this guy, you don't meet the Grim Reaper, you meet the Necromancer and he's got his own story. He's like bird based. He's got this human skull that just morphs into this beak. He's got bird hands that are flexible, of course, with cosplay creepy little necklace. I could have added some like wings to him. I realized that after I did it and the bottom isn't finished like most of my sculptures, but nobody's looking at that anyway. I think he's a really interesting character. I would love to expand the mutant universe further without just making more mutants. I'd like to do, you know, more characters with their stories like these guys. And honestly, I want to know what you want to see me make from the mutant universe next year. I know I did a community tab poll about that a lot. And a lot of you are saying you want to see like environments and dioramas. So let me know, keep going with your ideas. Next up, we have the Mimic from the Mortuary Assistant. This is a new game that came out last year and I don't have the physical sculpture anymore because I actually gave it to the game developer. Here's a picture of him with it. And that was pretty cool. The guy that actually designed this character has the sculpture I made of it. So he was a pretty simple sculpture, you know, straightforward, just basic human form. Definitely something I don't wanna see at night creeping around. Next up, I have the little red dragon I made with Nerdy Crafters Super Not Another Craft Kit. This guy was a blast. All of her kits are amazing. If she ever releases more, make sure you get one. They're so good. They have everything you need, super high quality. And she just keeps coming up with these ideas that just keep one-upping all of her other ideas that she releases. So check out the video if you wanna see how I made this guy, cause he was a lot of fun. And it came with a portable airbrush. Like the kit just had everything. I love this guy. I gotta give him to Jackie next time I send her something for one of her videos. And next up we have Pinwheel, which is the personification of chaos. This guy is not a wanderer. He's what I called 
and Intrepid, a whole nother line of characters that I kind of got away from after I made him. I just wasn't feeling super inspired to make more, but that's not to say he's not a cool character because I think he's really interesting. And look, his, his little, you know, propeller thing works. <laughs> Maybe if I made him light enough, I could have like sculpted him over a drone and he could like really fly around. Next up, we've got the Twilight Ring Wraith from Lord of the Rings. His sword broke off because I dropped him from a pretty decent height and I'm surprised that more of him wasn't damaged, but that's because he's cosplay and I just glued the sword on really quick. So please excuse that. But this was a super fun project. I actually got like a professional airbrush for him. I love all his details. I've been wanting to sculpt one of these things for so long and really get into Lord of the Rings characters because I love Lord of the Rings. And he was just a fun sculpt. He's so like dynamic looking and all that, you know, fabric blowing everywhere. I just, I think he's cool. I love him. One of my favorite sculptures from last year, for sure. Just gotta glue his sword back on. Next up, I have the Owl Guide, which is the only other guide character I made last year from the Mutant Universe. I've gotten so many requests to make an Owl Guide that I did it. And I always wanted to make one. This isn't exactly how I pictured him originally, but I love the simplicity of him and what he's able to do and what his superpowers are. I just, I think this character needed to be really simple. And originally I had this thing planned where he was gonna have like these huge wings and be super elaborate and actually be like the leader of the guides, but I have another idea for that now. So I just kept him super simple and I love how from this angle with his little shawl, he looks like an owl perched on a branch. Next up we have my little spooky tree diorama for spooky season. Halloween, always love doing these. This is kind of like a one up from the one I did the previous year. We got a tree this time, a fence, some tombstones, some pumpkins, a little pathway. And this is definitely a fun little project to do, especially like if you have kids, it's super easy. And the end result is really cool looking. So definitely love making these. I got to think of a, another diorama to make next Halloween. I freaking hate this thing. Oh, I mean, I know, I guess it came out okay. It looks fine, but it's just, it's, it's just boring and I really don't have much to say about it. The light is super dull and it's just, I don't know. This is my coffin diorama that kind of lights up. <laughs> Did I throw the ghoul in the garbage? Oh no, he's right here. Next up, we have my little floating ghoul guy. This was fun to make. I really enjoyed making the rib cage on him and you know, adding all the fabric, of course, and then the little miniature details down there, all the moss and whatnot. Super simple sculpture, but again, pretty effective, very beginner friendly project if you're somewhat comfortable with putting a little bit of clay on some wire. I actually got this idea from seeing a Halloween decoration that my neighbor put up where it looked like there was a ghost floating behind a tombstone. It was like an optical illusion. He doesn't really look like he's floating, but he looks like a ghoul and it looks like he's coming up from the grave and that's all that matters. <laughs> Next up we have Sam, the Halloween spirit from Trick or Treat. I'm actually going to give him to Mike Doherty in person when I go to California next, so that's awesome. And he's just a fun, pretty simple sculpture of a very beloved Halloween character. Then fast forward a couple weeks, I kind of disappeared in the middle of spooky season, cut my spooky season series short. I just needed some extra time to, you know, regroup and I had a bunch of crap going on. But when I came back, I made Baba Yaga and I don't think a lot of people know who she is, but she's a fun sculpture. I really think I went harder than usual on the environment on her. She's got all those little, you know, spongy pieces of like miniature accessories and whatnot, little rocks and pieces of cork and moss. And I made her mortar and pestle and then her broom and all that and her hair's real and she's got like weeds in it and stuff. I love this sculpture. She didn't perform very well, but I still like her and I still think she's good. So I thought she was a good comeback sculpture. I don't know, look at her. Next up, we have this little guy right here. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, my mom gave me the idea for him and that is so unlike her to say something like this, but I'm glad she did because look at him. I definitely think he's an improvement on the original and I think he'd be a good way to get your kids to behave. <laughs> Overall, super fun, easy sculpture and I just, I love him. I just think he's so weird. I actually had him in my Christmas tree for a little bit. Next up, we've got my creepier version of the Grinch. 
I love this guy. I think he's probably my favorite sculpture that I made last year. And I think he just looks, he just looks awesome. Look at him, look at his face. He's holding an ornament. He's got all that real, real full on him. Oh my God. Real fur on him. And he was just a blast to make, especially his face and like making his mouth open with all those little teeth. And I know a lot of you guys liked him as well. Maybe I'll make it like a tradition to sculpt a different version of the Grinch every year. We'll see. Next up, we have my little flaming gingerbread man from the movie Krampus. Can't really see the light up part of him right now, but he lights up. This was my first experience wiring LEDs myself. So he's kind of rigged, kind of, you know, not perfect, but it was fun doing that. I actually had more fun wiring the LEDs than I did sculpting it. So definitely want to do more LED stuff next year. And with these things, I just think like the possibilities are endless. Um, kind of wish I would have put the on and off switch on the back, like, you know, any normal person would do, but whatever. Next up, we have my second Jack Skellington sculpture that I've done. This is him in the poor Jack scene when he falls out of the sky after trying to take over Christmas and realizes that he actually can't do that because he's not Santa and he comes to terms with who he actually is. And it's a great scene from the movie and totally appropriate for the holiday season. <laughs> Hated sculpting the angel, but she was definitely necessary. Next up, we've got the hide from Wednesday. This guy was so hard to make just because there are no really clear pictures of him online or even when you pause the movie he's so animated and dynamic that it's hard to see anything besides his head and his hands so i think i did an okay job i think you know i think you guys liked him he was a fun sculpt he's all made out of cosplay i think his face looks cool i love the fabri-tac drool in his mouth if he goes in focus, can you see it? I don't know, but he was a fun sculpture and I still don't know if his hair is the right color, but overall, I really enjoyed making him. <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, my last piece for 2022 was this Robot Santa transformation. This guy is just weird and his head spins around. I don't want to turn it on because I don't want it to like get his beard caught in his neck like it always does, but this is him. <laughs> a kind of a cool transformation. I guess you could consider this a thrift store transformation. I haven't done one of those in a long time, but he's definitely freaky and I definitely don't put him out with my decorations. I'd rather put out the evil elf, but that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and set them all out now. And that is a wrap, everyone. It is so hard to believe that I've done another year of this. I have more sculptures than I know what to do with, but honestly, at the end of the day, every single sculpture symbolizes my true passion that I have for sculpting, and being able to share it with you makes it even better. My reason for doing this is, of course, you know, to support myself, but at the end of the day, it's all about inspiring other people and to inspire you to pick up some clay and maybe discover some creativity that you didn't know you had. At the end of the day, doing this is about creating art from my heart, from my imagination, but most of all to inspire all of you to create as well. Whether I inspired you to pick up clay for the first time in 20 years or just pick up clay for the first time in general and make your own sculptures, it is truly overwhelming the amount of love and support that I have received from all of you. I get emails from people saying that my videos have like helped them cope with depression, divorces, illnesses, you name it, and it's just, it's so humbling and I never thought that starting this channel would do that. I thought I was just gonna, you know, make sculptures for a living, entertain some people, but like sculpting is life changing for a lot of you out there. And that just means the world to me. And I can't imagine having a career where I don't do that. I just, I need to continue doing what I'm doing. And it's just a lot. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to deal with sometimes, but at the end of the day, I love what I do. Even I get burnt out, you know, everybody does. I have my days, I have weeks where I make good sculptures. I have weeks where I make sculptures that aren't so good. But overall, I love what I do and I can't imagine doing anything else as a career. So I don't know where this is gonna take me, but I do know that I have a bunch of amazing stuff planned for next year, including an incredible sculpting kit that's seriously gonna be game changing. I can't wait until I can start sharing the details of that with you and I hope that you love it as much as I do right now. And it's not even halfway done, but I'm, I'm already this excited about it because I know it's gonna be amazing. 
And no matter you know what level of sculpting you're at, whether you're a super crazy professional or someone who just bought some clay today at the craft store, you're gonna love this kit, I promise. And overall, I know I said this a million times, but thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me this platform and allowing me to do what I love every single day. I could not do this without you, and I am so grateful that I'm able to do it. Thank you so much for watching and being here. Don't forget to stick around after this so you can see all of the amazing sculptures that all of you have been working on throughout this year. Happy New Year, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.